So today's vlog is going to seem a little choppy because, uh, so today is a Friday, but I'm going to be putting in today's vlog some material that I shot on Wednesday, but we're going to do a two part of the material that was shot on Wednesday, and some of that material is also going to go in tomorrow's vlog. So I'm going to talk um, today with you about Genesis 30 and 31 while I work on the car. And then after that, we're going to transition to a discussion that I have with Ray Schwartz about evangelism. I really hope today's vlog isn't super long. Sorry if it is. Just to be clear, today, today's vlog is not about learning how to fix a car. I'm just going to be fixing the car while I talk. So any of you mechanics out there, please don't critique me for my video because that is not the purpose of it. In chapter 30, we basically see how all of Jacob's children are born through Rachel, Leah, and the two maidservants. Uh, the two handmaid servants that bear children in addition to Rachel and Leah are Bilhah and Zilpah. What we see in this chapter is a lot of what we saw with Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. God said through them that they would birth many nations, but what it appears to happen is Leah, Rachel, Jacob, and all the handmaid servants seem to try to take matters into their own hands instead of letting God allow his promise to be fulfilled in the way that he wants it to be fulfilled. Fresh. Even at one point, one of Rachel's sons, I believe it's Reuben, goes out to the field, gets some mandrakes, and Rachel tells Leah, your son Reuben, give me some of the mandrakes. And in return, I'll let you have a night with my husband, who is also Leah's husband. And she starts bearing more kids. As Jacob continues to prosper, Laban sees that, but Jacob is, he's ready to go home. And Laban basically says, hey, don't, please don't leave. I will give you whatever wage you want to stick around and work my fields. And so Jacob tells him the wage that any spotted, striped, or speckled animal that would be born or that was in the field would belong to Jacob and all the rest of the animals would belong to Laban. And the Lord's hand was upon Jacob. So in Laban's deception, because what happened was Laban uh, sent his men ahead even though he made this deal with Jacob and basically removed all, this, all the spot and speckled animals. So he's being deceptive, but even in spite of Laban's deception, God still blessed Jacob and gave him all these animals that were born with spots uh, and these markings that would belong to him. We'll let that let that drain for a little bit. Then in chapter 30, Jacob is finally like, I gotta leave. Laban's not gonna let me go. And if I leave, he's not gonna want me to leave, and because he's gonna be Sad that I'm taking his daughters and all his grandkids. And so Jacob leaves without telling Laban. And Laban gets upset. Laban basically goes after Jacob and all that he has. And they meet up at Gilead. Now Rachel had stolen some of the household idols from her father's tent. And that was another reason why Laban was just angry. So he searches throughout the tents to see where that idol is and even Jacob he's unaware of this Jacob says hey whoever you find that has this idol kill him and Rebecca is sitting on the sack in which it is and she basically tells her dad sorry dad I can't I can't sit up right now because the time of a woman is upon me I'll let you figure out what that means for yourself we're, we're getting there the night before Laban catches Jacob. The Lord speaks to Laban in a dream and tells him, 
hey, just be careful what you say to him, what you do to him. My anointing is upon him, basically, is what the Lord is saying. So once he catches him and Laban searches throughout the house for the idol, doesn't find it, Jacob basically makes his case to Laban and says, Bro, why have you been mistreating me so much? Uh, I've only served you. I've worked for you these last 20 years. Like, what is your vendetta against me? And Laban confesses, essentially, he doesn't want to lose his, his family. He doesn't want to lose his daughters and his grandchildren. So, let's get this oil filter off here. So, Laban and Jacob make a covenant to basically solidify or make right their relationship as Jacob is getting ready to go back ah, into his land and Laban's getting ready to lose his daughters and grandkids. And then they both depart and go their own way. You know, I think the biggest thing with this section that I saw and you see it with everyone in the story, Leah, Rachel, Jacob, Laban, is that they all were driven by this one idea, is that they all needed control of the situation. This, this is how we are today. We, we freak out when we don't have control of some things in our lives, that we are people that are based on wanting to have control. And the tricky thing is, is that God, the message that he communicates to us is that he is the one that's in control and we are to relinquish or acknowledge that he is instead of trying to have everything down in our own lives. I can tell you, whenever it comes to life and our relationship with God, if we ever try to take matters into our own hands, it's not going to go over well. You could almost boil everything down to when it comes to sinfulness and idolatry uh, to this idea of control, that, that we want control, that sin basically in a way is defined by saying, God, I don't trust you, God, I don't think you're in control, so therefore i got to take matters into my own hands. And we have to trust the Lord, we have to know that the Lord is in control, even in situations where it seems like he's not. Evangelism vlog with Ray Schwartz. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, this is day 21 of the J137 vlog, and we have a very special segment in the vlog today. And we have here Mr. Ray Schwartz, and he's going to share a little bit with us. Uh, some things about evangelism. Uh, you know, the, the purpose of this channel is discipleship. And one of the key aspects of discipleship is evangelism, knowing how to do it, and just doing it. So, Ray, what, what do you, you know, when someone meets you for the first time, what is something that, you know, what, what is it that you want people to know about you when they meet you for the first time? Well, <laughs> so many things. So many things, okay. But, uh-huh. Uh, I want them to know I, I, I know Jesus, that I'm a follower of Jesus, that I don't just want to know things about him, but that it, I was so intrigued with his life that I studied him and that I received him mm. personally by faith, mm. and uh, that I'm a Jesus follower, which is really what evangelism is. No, that's great. Anything else that you know, well, people I, know about you? That I'm a pretty normal guy, that I'm just like them, that... Mm. Um, it's not the super spiritual that think of or want to know of about God and Jesus and eternity and where in the world they are on this whole planet. Yeah, totally. So, we're here now to talk about evangelism. And uh, the first question that I have for you is how would you define evangelism? Because I think... 
people don't even really know what evangelism is, or at least they can't seem to define it for themselves. So how would you define evangelism? Telling the story about Jesus and how that impacts me. There you go. So, it's like a mic drop moment right boom. there. Just like, we're boom. done, the vlog is done for today. No, it's not. we got more to come. So, quick. It's the you... story of the Bible. I mean, yeah. um, from, from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. um, and as you're going through your vlog, you're touching on it, that mm. uh, it's all about God and who He is and who His Son Jesus is. Right. Jesus being God, mm -hmm. God's own Son, God Himself. God is one. Why God sent Jesus in human form, mm -hmm. why Jesus came, mm -hmm. and um, why what he did for us through his life, and especially in his death, mm -hmm. in his burial, and his resurrection, impacts me today and for eternity. Sure. Honestly, it's about Jesus. And, and, I, and I love that because even the purpose of this vlog is we're wanting to point people to Jesus. It's like it's not about uh, a, uh, like an organization or or a, you know, a non-profit? Or well, that's the like confusion. That, you know? People get confused. They mm -hmm. think um, evangelism is about um, my sharing Jesus in such a way that they'll come to church with me. Yeah, and we think that, okay, yeah, we have a number of people, you know, butts in seats, so therefore right. evangelism is working. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's, no, we have to have the right biblical understanding of what it looks like. It's about the, life change. 